So with only one chapter to go before a whole four week break, I'm sure we can bet that chapter 1053 is set to be a huge one. Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1052. You've been warned! Hello Manakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and I don't usually do this, but given we have just that one final chapter before the Wano arc supposedly ends, I do think we have a lot to discuss. Oda's final chapter before he goes on his break is probably one of the most highly anticipated chapters, or at least it is for me, and not just because the last time One Piece had a month-long hiatus, we saw a time skip, which in itself is a big deal, but that's not the only reason why I'm anticipating big things from chapter 1053. It's more because of the simple fact that we were left with a number of cliffhangers in the latest chapter. And speaking of cliffhangers, I have been up all night tossing and turning, wondering why you will not subscribe to this channel. And let me tell you something, I'm already a sleep deprived girl, so please do me a favor, help me out here, help me get some sweet, sweet dreams by resolving this mystery and click that subscribe button. Or you can actually let me know why you won't subscribe, either way it will help me improve my content which can only mean good news for you, so please do comment below, or do subscribe, or do both, or else. Alright, so chapter 1053 has the potential to be groundbreaking and not just for the world of One Piece but also in the real world for us. Because this next chapter could very well be the chapter that completely changes how we look at the series. I mean in the latest chapter, Oda teased us with the possibility of seeing new bounties and seeing the announcements of new emperors very very soon. And given that this raid on Onigashima has concluded with not just the defeat of one but two of the Yonko, it's practically guaranteed that we will be seeing very steep rises in bounties and reputations of those key figures who were instrumental and involved in this raid, you know, including Luffy, Lore, and Kid, but also the Straw Hats. At the end of the day, although it was the Supernova Captain Trio that took down Kaido and Big Mom, it's also undeniable that the Straw Hat crew played a huge role with many of them taking down high-ranking officers of a Yonko-level crew. And so it's safe to say that it's very likely we will see new bounties reflecting their feats, as well as the continued spread of the notoriety of the Straw Hat Pirates as a crew across the world. And then with chapter 1052, we saw a very interesting detail that Luffy has now become widely recognized as Joy Boy within Wano. And although it's true that Wano remains an isolated country, so this news may not spread widely across the world, but then the last chapter also made a point in clarifying that news of Wano could make its way out. Meaning that if news of Luffy as being Joy Boy does find its way out, perhaps even despite the best intentions or efforts of the world government, then Luffy and the Straw Hats are sure to become household names, inspiring fear or inspiring awe depending on who you are and depending on how the tale is told. And then this would not only be huge for the world of One Piece, but could also change our reading of the series because it completely recontextualizes how we view the Straw Hats. You know, Luffy and the crew have always been underdogs, pulling off extremely impressive feats against all odds. And so these announcements have the potential to completely flip this perception on our heads, especially if their status and reputations are raised to astronomical levels, such as Luffy being declared as an Emperor of the Seas. I mean, personally, I was very surprised to find that a part of this big news also pertains to new emperors. I was actually somewhat expecting to see this whole emperor system being dismantled with the fall of Kaido and Big Mom. Because at the end of the day, none of the crews currently at Wano feel quite ready to take on this title, even the Straw Hats, except maybe if you also consider the Grand Fleet. And it is possible that this news actually relates to the Shichibukai 
Kai and the other drama that's been unfolding outside of Wano. You know, rather than seeing any of the crews currently at Wano being raised to such high levels yet. But then also in saying that, Big News Morgans has already deemed Luffy and Emperor unofficially. So it is possible that this now has, in fact, been made official. And if this volume 25 cover is anything to go by, maybe the new Emperors will actually consist of Shanks, Blackbeard, Luffy, and Buggy. And you know what? I'm actually all for it because I'd love to see what sort of crazy shenanigans Buggy got himself into to get to this stage. Either way, whether this news of the new Emperors involves the Straw Hats or Law or Kids Crews for that matter, either way, it does still seem like Oda has set us up for some huge upgrades in terms of bounties and reputations for Law, for Kid, for Luffy, and the Straw Hats. And now that we are entering the end game of the series, it even feels like that Oda may be changing that classic underdog formula to some degree. But anyways, that's not the only anticipation for chapter 1053 because 1052 dropped another huge bombshell on us, which was the arrival of Ryokugyu at Wano. And it's wild that this new Marine Admiral has finally showed up at Wano, considering the number of theories and speculations surrounding this enigmatic figure, and especially because of the connections and the speculations possibly tying him to the land of Wano itself. And now we can of course add to these speculations given the extra bits of detail that we received in this latest chapter. So the most interesting or obvious new detail that we received is that floating flower which seems to be giving him abilities of flight. And from my very limited and basic knowledge of flora, I'm gonna guess that this flower is actually the chrysanthemum flower, in which case this could be very suggestive in a number of ways. I mean, I may be reading into it a bit too much, but chrysanthemums are a very highly esteemed flower in Japan, associated with royalty for centuries, as well as symbolizing longevity and rejuvenation, as well as goodwill, and also a number of other things depending on the specific color of the flower. But anyways, this idea of of goodwill particularly stands out for me because it ties in very well with the popular idea that Yokugyu is not here to start another battle or another fight. It really could be more like Garp at post Ennis lobby situation and this chrysanthemum might metaphorically be Ryokugyu's white flag. You know, even if that's not the intentions or the orders of the Gorosei who seem very committed to capturing Robin. Because even if capturing Robin is what Sakazuki ordered, we know that Ryokugyu hasn't always followed through with what the fleet admiral has told him to. And maybe it's just my personal bias because I don't know how I feel about another saving Robin plotline, but I don't think that Ryokugyu will successfully abduct Robin even if those are the orders or plans of the world government, even if they are his own plans. But something else that the chrysanthemum flower may be an indication of are his powers, or more specifically, Ryokugu's devil fruit. Because now this seems to add more credit to the theory that Ryokugu has some sort of plant-based devil fruit. Apart from the obvious green color scheme for Ryokugu, which is very obviously representative of plants and nature, now we also have this flower, which only seems seems to add strength to this supposed plant theme. And then in that case, Yokugo having some sort of plant-based power could actually even explain his fast. The idea would be that Yokugo doesn't need to physically eat himself because through his plant-based abilities, he could sustain himself through use of photosynthesis. And we could even extend this plant concept, and instead of just thinking of a general plant-based paramecia devil fruit, we could also speculate that Yokugu has the embodiment of the forest god devil fruit, a mythical Zoan devil fruit. And the forest god is a figure that we were introduced to alongside the sun god in the Skypiea arc. And given that we've now since seen Luffy have the sun god Nika devil fruit, it's certainly possible that these other gods, you know, the rain god, the land god, and this forest God that they'll all possibly have associated devil fruits. And then in which case, I think that that could also make quite a lot of sense. I mean, Yokugu is an admiral after all, you know, someone that Doflamingo even recognized as a monster. So him having some sort of mythical Zoan devil fruit of godly proportions 
wouldn't be out of the question. But another possible hint that we could potentially make out from this flower is about Yokugu's origins, or more specifically about him being somehow connected to Wano. And this is something that has been widely speculated, especially since the recent or I should say the relatively recent reveal of Shimotsuki Ushimaru, because Ushi in Japanese means bull, and in the anime, Ushimaru was depicted with a green bull or a green ox on his clothing. And there have also been some other potential hints, such as Yokugu's extremely large size. I mean, he was even larger than Fujitora, who is no small man because Fujitora himself stands at a whopping 2.7 meters. So it's possible that Yokugu has some incredible samurai blood in him. I mean, we saw, you know, in this latest couple of chapters about adult Momo's incredible size up, you know, due to his father's samurai blood. But then also going back to Fujitora for a bit, it's always been very interesting to observe Fujitora's attire because it bears a very strong resemblance to traditional Japanese clothing, which can also be found at Wano, you know, right down to his wooden sandals. So then given the seemingly very close and very familiar relationship between these two admirals, we could even speculate that maybe both Rokugu and Fujitora are both from Wano. But if we were to just stick with Roguku for now, then like I mentioned earlier, the chrysanthemum flower can also represent and symbolize royalty or nobility in Japanese culture. And we do know that the Shimotsuki family is one of the great houses of Wano. And in all honesty, although I can agree that a lot of these connections do seem very compelling or at least plausible. I'm not quite sure how much I really believe that Rogukyu will actually be a Shimotsuki member or at least be Ushimaru himself, but I do find it very plausible that he could indeed be from Wano, so I wouldn't rule out a connection to a noble family entirely. I mean, the possibility of him having some sort of connection to Wano only seems to be strengthened with the latest chapter, particularly because of Yamato introducing us to this idea of a vigil custom. So apparently in Wano, people give something up, you know, something like food while they're waiting for their prayers to be answered. And I do find it very interesting that Oda decided to include this detail in the very same chapter that he also showed us Rokugu, a figure that we know to be currently fasting. You know, it's very much like Oda to sprinkle in bits and pieces and hints for us to string along. And what I'm really getting at is that it is possible that Rokugu gave up food, gave up eating as part of his vigil in custom with Wano traditions. And so if we do suppose that Rokugu does have some sort of deeper connections to Wano, then also going back to the idea that Rokugu isn't here to actually fight and is more being utilized to drop some information on some lore and other reveals, then him actually having a deeper connection to the land of Wano, which still remains a very mysterious entity, then this would make the potential info drops all the more meaningful and satisfying and comprehensive. And judging by his demeanor when he was responding to Sakazuki in the latest chapter, as well as what we have seen of him already, such as when he was conversing with Fujitora, I am really suspecting that he's going to be the most chill and laid-back admiral that we have seen so far. Like the most loosest brand of personal justice that we've seen so far. And I really love how Oda seems to have conveyed this through the color schemes of each admiral as well. And what I mean is that we previously had Sakazuki, Kizaru, and Aokiji, who obviously had the red, yellow, and blue color themes respectively, as well as their own conceptions of justice. You know, thorough, unclear, and lazy justice. And very interestingly, it just so happens that red, yellow, and blue are the three primary colors that can be used or mixed to make other secondary or tertiary colors. And this seems to be what we have for the two new admirals. You know, we have the secondary colors of purple for Fujitora, a color that's made with the mixing of red and blue. And then we've got green, which is made up of yellow and blue for Ryokugu. And then when you actually consider these two new admirals, you could also say that their ideas of justice, or in the case of Ryokugu, we don't actually know his personal brand of justice yet. At least we can see 
he will sort of make out his personality. Fujitora and Rokugu seem to also be sort of a blend of the admirals that they are originally inspired from, or the admirals that they derive their colors from. For example, let's take Fujitora. So purple obviously being made up of red and blue then means that Fujitora would be a mix of Sakazuki and Aokiji, which at first admittedly seems strange because they are, you know, portrayed to be polar opposites. But it's worth noting that Aokiji didn't always subscribe to this idea of a lazy justice. You know, we know that he was once a believer of burning justice. So then when you consider of that and mix that in with Sakazuki's thorough justice, you can actually see how Fujitora has come to follow this incredibly morally upstanding idea of humane justice. You know, we've seen that Fujitora has this burning passion to thoroughly pursue justice and not justice in the sense of absolute justice or what the world government considers or decrees is just, but this pure and true sense of justice that we usually think of. And then when you consider Ryokugu, you can actually see the sort of blend between the lazy justice of Aokiji, as well as the similarly laid back and carefree, unclear justice of Kizaru. And to be honest, these observations don't really have any sort of connection to Wano, but I just wanted to share it because I thought it was really cool. But I suppose we could connect it to Wano and maybe say that Maybe these observations will be confirmed as we find out more about the Admiral's personality. As I'm sure we'll get some confirmations about a whole lot of things as well. You know, such as the Poneglyphs, if we are correct in assuming that that's what Robin was off doing off screen in chapter 1052. You know, maybe even some closure as to what happened to the rest of the Beast Pirates, or in that case, even where the rest of Big Mom's children are. You know, whether we'll see Wano really remain closed off to the rest of the world. Maybe we'll even find out what happened at the Reverie, especially because the last time we heard of Rokugu, we knew him to have fought Sabo and the revolutionaries. And this is, of course, as well as the stuff that we have discussed throughout this video, you know, such as the bounties, the new Yonko, as well as Rokugu. And then on top of all of this, we also still have to see the great feast, the great banquet. And I really do wonder which of these will be that famous last panel that Oda has been so excited to draw. And all I can say is that I am just a sight. But anyways, these are just some of my thoughts on what to expect in chapter 1053. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So please do let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join our Joyfleet Discord server or even become a Patreon member. And I do want to thank all our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.